welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do some jewelry making because I've been making some pretty, pretty fun looking necklaces lately. Isn't she pretty? I've been making some necklaces like this and surprise, surprise, these necklaces are the big project I had been talking about in my previous uh, jewelry videos. And I thought I'd make one today. I have started the planning just a little bit. I'm gonna finish it up as much as I can. Uh, here are some of the charms that I'm gonna use. There's more than this already, but these are the only two I brought out here. There's one. And this one. And I didn't make this, obviously, but... There's lots of trucks outside. Of course, the garbage truck comes by right now. It's still going on. I can't, I can't. Okay, so I started the planning. I'm gonna finish it up a little bit. This is really all I have so far. Hello, voiceover B here. I just wanted to explain my process for uh, planning out the layout of the necklace, and it was really just to draw the general shape of it and then add beads that I knew I had. I don't usually plan out necklaces like this, but I actually am glad that I did because it meant I knew I was using at least one of all the beads that I wanted to use and they were all spread out even enough. And generally it saved me a lot of time when actually making it. Typically it takes me about uh, an hour and a half to make a necklace like this, but instead it took me an hour and a half to plan it out, make the main piece, and a little bit of an extra piece. And yeah, and I also just kind of wanted to share some of the uh, Instagram accounts that make necklaces like these that I took a lot of inspiration from. They're all beautiful handmade fun jewelry pieces that I take lots of, uh, lots of joy from looking at, so. Yeah, these are all on Instagram. Uh, Picnic Doc Blanket, Clunky Gems, Wisteria Bloom Co, EO underscore Studio underscore Official, Ness Handmade underscore Fairy Stuff, Different Bugs, Tears and Deers, Beautiful underscore 1976, uh, Ketometry, Harlot Hands, K underscore 8 Jewels, Tufu FIFA underscore Graveyard Garden, Pillow Sob and Killjoy Jewels. So yeah, these are all accounts that I have found over the past couple months that I just really, really love looking at all the stuff they make. And yeah, I encourage you to go check check that stuff out. <laughs> many, many minutes later. So I have my sketch. Commotion is happening. It's mostly like rough planning, uh, so I might not stick to this, but I ha now I have like an idea of what I kind of want to go for. So I'm going to go back inside and we're going to actually do this thing because now it's starting to get hot. And as much as I'd love to make another outside jewelry making video, uh, global warming is stopping me from doing that. <laughs> what are you doing laying on my shirt? Hey, voiceover B coming back at you again, this time with an explanation of how I actually make the necklaces. Um, typically my necklaces are about 14 inches long, so I cut an 18 inch piece of string and then I build it up to 14 inches and it gives me 4 inches of uh, leeway so I can tie it off at the, uh, the different clasps. Uh, but in this case, I should have actually done two sections of nine inches so that I could tie it off at the um, at the octopus because the octopus doesn't have any bead holes. <laughs> so I had to I had to improvise a little bit later, and by improvise I mean just cut off all the extra string after tying it. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to the actual pattern of most of the beads, typically I try to keep it looking as random as possible. Sometimes I'll put a seed bead in between each of the fun ones to make it not look so clunky. And I'll be using this technique later on on a different piece, uh, not a different piece, but a different part of the necklace. And sometimes I don't do that because I like that bit of clunk and an actual like randomness. 
Like in the cases of these necklaces, instead of worrying about, a look, uh, about it looking clunky, I focus on making sure all the statement sections and charms are evenly spread apart, and the sections in between are all still minimally intricate and all happen to complement each other. I think it just makes it look a lot more fun all the way around. As for placement, I typically like to put the more eye-catching charms in the front and the smaller charms in the back, just so that the weight keeps it proper, you know. Uh, also, anyone with long hair, like you're not really looking at the back of the necklace, so yeah. Here you can see me struggling a little bit with the chain details, because oftentimes I like to use chains themselves as quote-unquote beads by stringing the necklace through any one of the chain links and then just, you know, leaving it for a little bit and then putting it back on later once I've added some more beads to the actual necklace. I just think it adds a nice bit of texture to it and a little bit of dangliness, but it also means that I have to measure it correctly to make sure it actually like hangs nicely with the necklace. Uh, during this, I learned that cutting it too long is much better than cutting it too short because if it doesn't hang nice, then you can just nip off however much you need to and then thread it through as opposed to finding out it doesn't fit and then having to take off all the beads so that you can put on a longer chain like I did. <laughs> Another little fun thing I like to do is uh, thread on some of my thicker hold beads so that it kind of looks like the chain itself has a little bit of a charm to it. I just, I like the idea of my accessories having accessories. And with this, it looks like my necklace has a necklace. And I just, I love that. <laughs> and as we're finishing up that half of the necklace, I wanted to bring attention to one of the charms that I'm putting on the necklace right now. Um, a bit of a signature thing I like to try to do is try to include a large handmade seed bead branch looking kind of thing to one side of the necklace and try to use up that same amount of space on the other side with chains. I like the asymmetry look. I think it adds a lot of the character of the piece. I The way I made these is just with a bunch of separate pieces of 24 gauge wire with some seed beads just thrown on there and I kind of maneuver it all together to make it look like branches coming off. I just, I think it looks really great. And you may ask yourself, why do I like these crazy looking necklaces? I don't know, you can call me a tumbler bitch, but I've always thought that the neck and chest area and like collarbones and stuff was really pretty. And I think the necklaces do a really good job of drawing attention to these areas, not to mention that it fills up a lot of the empty space there if you're flat chested like me. <laughs> the clunky and randomness of them, I think gives off kind of a mermaid slash fairy vibe because they kind of look like a bunch of trinkets that were found and then thrown onto a necklace. Overall, I just, I like the maximalist style that they show off. They make someone look like they're a lot of fun to be around, like there's never a dull moment, and it's all because of this over-the-top busy necklace around your neck. They're also just super fun to make. Seeing all the different little details all tie together and complement each other nicely is so satisfying. Not to mention wearing it out and then getting compliments and then getting to proudly say that you made it yourself. Um, it's, it's just such a confidence boost. It's great, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the necklace is done. Time to try it on. So I know it does look significantly different than the drawing. I realized that I had put on way too many beads and it was not the desired length that I typically like my necklaces at. She's so pretty. Uh, so I added this second one just to fill up that empty space up at the top. I love busy necklaces. I think it's so fun. Wow. We love her. I just, I love this one. It's very, <laughs> I like it. I'm glad this turned out good because I was kind of worried that the orange would make it look kind of bad, but I don't think it does. I think I did a pretty good job with all my little busy bits. I think she's, I think she looks great. I'll be making a lot more of these necklaces and eventually I will be putting them up on my 
Depop, you should check them out because they take a really long time to make and I would like them to be appreciated. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're staying happy and hydrated and creative and stuff. I will see you in my next video. I don't know what it'll be yet, so it'll be a surprise to both of us. And I hope this inspired you to make a necklace of some sort because it's really fun and I love doing it. See ya.